Woo! It's another call cool up for Luke Shaw. Supposedly Ben Chilwell caught COVID from Billy Gilmore And Mason Mount, yeah he stays pissed But I can't like England look much more of a threat With Saka and Grealish, hold tight Ericsson, hold tight the Danish Woo! It's another cool up for Luke Shaw Supposedly Ben Chilwell caught COVID from Billy Gilmore And Mason Mount, yeah he stays pissed But I can't like England look much more of a threat With Saka and Grealish, hold tight Ericsson, hold tight the Danish Woo! It was a near miss, but he pulled through and he passed fit Yo, this is the OT99 banter room where opinions are shared and smoke gets served. Look, we're back again with another show. It's your boy, Firms, and I'm back again with NK. And you know what? Today, we are not going to talk about Sancho. We are going to talk about other Manchester, Manchester related transfer activity sort of news, but not Sancho. I'm tired of Sancho right about now. Let's give it a rest. <laughs> Do you know what? But outside of that, before we talk about the uh, the transfer news, okay, let's talk about the lineup, the England England lineup. So obviously, there's a lot of controversy that's happening. Before we get into the players themselves, like um, with the England squad, there's a lot of confusion. So I just finished listening to South Gareth Southgate's interview, uh, and he's basically Gareth Southgate is is bemused, he's baffled, he seems quite pissed that you know England is getting singled out. Uh, mistreated and Scotland players are not do you know for example is it uh, Mason Mount and who's the other one Ben Chilwell has to isolate now they're not going to partake in obviously to get today's game they're not going to partake in the next game um, as well because Southgate was querying about their fit then so it's not that they're not 100% going to partake but he was saying how with the training schedules and everything, he doesn't know if they will be up to par or whatever like that. I think they'll be fine, but he was just, he was putting it out yeah. there that it's not necessarily a guarantee. And obviously, they were saying how he came out and said, you know, you know, these players were around uh, Billy Gilmore for about 120 seconds outdoors. He doesn't understand, you know, people get on buses and in close um, spaces together, trans, you know, getting around to these games, planes, again, in close space. These guys are outdoors. He doesn't understand it, right? But the same time, again, Scotland players are not having to isolate and that's his teammates. You know, he's going to be in the same close space with these guys. So I don't know. What's your views on it anyway? I don't know. Well, when the whole thing came in, like before, I thought maybe they can, they have got Corona or something like that. But according to the sources, they actually produced a negative result. Like I think yesterday or something. And the reason why they wanted them to isolate was because after the game, they actually spent almost like about 25 minutes talking to Bill Gilmore inside the tunnel. So, but then, then again, to our head that uh, Andy Robert too uh, posted a video of him playing table tennis with uh, Billy, but then he deleted it. So I think it's just one of those ones that I feel like, I think all of this thing is done uh, through the medical kind of like team. I think England were best being uh, cautious by taking a uh, Chidwell and uh, what do you call it, a uh, Macy Mount out of it. I don't think it was UEFA or anyone. I feel like it was their own medical team to say, hey, you know what, we need to be cautious because if they got a virus and we leave them there and they affect the whole squad, it might just kind of like affect us going forward. You know, I don't think uh, it was uh, a UEFA or someone. I feel like it was England or medical team that kind of like advised that as a precaution not to let the whole thing stress uh, through the team. But Scotland too. The way Scotland do, we like Scotland cannot afford to do that because they can actually go out today. And if they go out today, what's the point of isolating some of the players when you go out? England have already qualified, so they can actually afford to say, "Hey, you know what? Let's put these people there as a precaution, and then we're going to ease them back inside. Maybe in like a day or two, if they do a second test and then they come out as a negative, then we can bring them in back. They, they need to do that anyway. At least it means that." Subge can actually play some people too. And obviously, everybody was hoping to see Mr. We're not going to say his name, but <laughs> he still don't even make the squad, but he still don't make the squad. And you know, that's a big question mark there. So, so I mean, so I think, so I think from what I heard, I heard it was the FA that um, sanctioned that. that Why? They have, to, they have to isolate. Um I don't think it, you know, England wanted to necessarily drop what well, Southgate didn't want to drop their golden boy. You know, Mount is their golden boy. He's been tearing it up to be fair, this this tournament. 
work rate, you know, not necessarily the yeah. top point of bag of goals, but he's been he's been a star performer. But um for me, I'm, I'm I feel like Manchester, I mean I say Manchester United, look, England are still in a very good position because yes, they've they've lost Mount and they've lost Chihuahua, but who they've got to cover is Luke Shaw, who's had a very fine season. Trippier has also been playing for them left back as well, which for right. some reason, you know, Southgate wants to do. But he, he, he done a job there, he held his own. And then, you know, you're talking up front, they've got countless a number of attacking options up front, you know. Um, and that will bring me on to the selection. So I was obviously surprised when I saw Saka in the lineup. Not to say that he isn't a, a good talent or anything, because he is. It's just the fact of the matter is, I thought if there's anyone that's going to be standing in, like, you know, sort of, you know, Foden didn't play as well. So Foden didn't play because he's on a yellow card. Southgate didn't want him to get risking, you know, getting another yellow and then missing a game yeah. or whatever. So he benched him. So you have no Mount and you have no Foden, but yet Sancho still doesn't make your starting lineup. Grealish did. Sancho didn't. Now that is baffling to me. For me, do you feel like there's a personal vendetta issue with Southgate or the other coaches and Sancho? What is it that is preventing Sancho from the guy that's had the most goal sort of assist contributions in the last three seasons compared to a lot of these guys? It's not getting a call up. I don't understand. No, but you know, I don't think it's a personal kind of vendetta. Like yesterday when we were talking about it and then we talk about, oh yeah, if they go there, you will play. And then I told you like straight away, I don't think Sancho start because Personally, what I thought like he would have done was move uh, Phil Foden into the middle of the pack and then play maybe by him Sterling on the right and then Rashford on the left. That's what I really thought like he was going to do. And this is what I keep seeing with the whole Sancho kind of like deal. Yes, Sancho is good, but at the end of the day, he's doing it in Bundesliga. You know, he's not doing it in the Premiership. I mean, Southgate don't get a chance enough to watch uh, what do you call it? Sancho like that. I mean, all of us, we are hyping about Sancho, but we're not really hyping about him because we, we, we see him play week and week up. We are hyping about him because of the stuff that we have heard about him, you know? I yeah. mean, I've watched Sancho maybe in some games. I'm not going to talk about I mean, the last few games I've watched, but I haven't watched a lot of games about Sancho to say, okay, you know what? Yes, he give the assist, but maybe off the ball, he can track back, he can do that. We don't know a lot about him. I know more about Saka than I do know about Sancho. Sancho, I know about Sancho because people say, oh yeah, he got this assist. If you talk about Sancho, we just look at his stats. I mean, I don't think you have watched more than 10 games of Sancho. Like, live, full 90 minutes. I, I, I personally, I haven't. I see him in some Champions League game, but most of the time, I don't really watch their full game. I just watch highlights of him and say, oh yeah, he's kind of like great and everything. But And this is why I'm just trying to tell you, my United should know about pay for Sancho because uh, whatever it is, and Sancho see him on training too. And it worries me too. Like, if he's seeing him training, and he don't feel like it's just that. Is he even a good trainer too? Like, are we taking a risk with this boy too? Because if you are that good, you should be convincing the manager on the training field to start you. And that just kind of like making me kind of like question, maybe, yes, he can be good, but is he good training? Is he one of those ones to that train hard or doesn't kind of like train hard? I don't know, but something about him is just not right. Something about him just don't right. It's obviously a lot of money. It's obviously a lot of money. See, we're getting into the Sancho talk, but it's not going to be the You tragedy. always have to get to the Sancho, man. <laughs> For me, yeah, it's not necessarily... The money isn't big. We all know the money is a lot of money. 80 plus million is a lot of money for any player, let alone a guy that's not been in the Premier League, you know, doing his thing. Yeah, he started off at City at a young age, but he hasn't really played his trade fully, fully in serious competitive matches for... A number of years he's been doing it in Germany, in Dortmund. But at the end of the day, my thing is, is, you know, you've got people like Calvin Phillips. You just came from Leeds, just got promoted in. He's been thrown into the midfield of England, starting regularly. You know, you've got guys like, who else is there? Sterling, he's a veteran, he's quality, we know. Um, but he didn't have the great best of seasons last season. You know, struggling for game time at times. He's being thrown in there, starting, and he, it's a good, it's a good decision because you know he's contributing. He's got a goal already. You know what I mean? Um, you know you've got guys like Declan Rice. Yes, he's performing at West Ham. It's not, the, it's not the biggest of teams. He's done all right. And then you've got who's the other guy that um, 
Greylish, Greylish is quality. We all know Greylish is quality, but Greylish is a guy that just managed to survive in the Premier League. Not obviously this season, but the last season before. Then he was doing his thing with Aston Villa. And he's, to be fair, he, he convinced me last season that he's a top top guy because I had my, I had my, you know, I was querying him. 100, 100 million worth of top guy? No, nah, no, nah, he's not 100 million worth of top guy for exactly, sure. Exactly, man. But my thing is, is these guys are getting opportunities. Saka, like, you know, Saka's good. He had a, but I just feel like Sancho, if you're not going to give him an opportunity, why bring him along? Do you know what I mean? Why bring him along? Because the damage is, it's it's not one of, like one of these kids that you bring along like you like you know Man United when you you get these youngsters you put them on a bench even though you know you're not going to play them they get excited knowing that you know they're one step closer now to playing because they sat on a bench like we did with a couple right. of the youngers Shora Torre you know Hannibal Mebri all of these guys that was Elanga but Sancho is probably going to do more bad than good because he's a guy that feels like he should be having an opportunity even if it's not to, to say even if it's like you know we're not going to start the guy. But at least if you're saying, do you know what? Let me give him a run, like 30 minutes in a game or whatever like that. Let him have an opportunity to show what he can do. Um, and he's just not getting an opportunity. And, and, you know, the fans are starting to talk. People are starting to talk like, you know, why isn't he getting a shot? I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, one of the reasons why me, the only thing that kind of baffled me that he starts starting is like, and I'm going to be honest here, to be honest with you, I feel like Saka is a bit ahead of him. In terms of like development, he played in the Premiership all the time. Like he getting in City, so he's also, he's also kind of like play in Europe too. You know, because he was playing a, a Europa League, it wasn't Champions League, but it's still Europa League. The only kind of a problem is I feel like uh, what do you call it, Saka. Uh, also, naturally, he also I don't know sure if he play on the right, but sometimes he plays a wing back and everything. But what, what I feel like the difference is obviously uh, Sancho has been in the England squad longer than Saka. So I would have thought that that would mean that Sancho should be ahead of him in terms of like picking. So the fact that he's playing ahead of him makes me question that too. And also one thing too that England has been struggling to, especially when we play Scotland is, and they got the same problem that my United have. When team defend deep, got your guys like Raheem Sterling and, and, and Fording, they couldn't break them that. And you know what? And I, I read this article that they were talking about uh, Fording, for example, Fording kind of a play in a Man City team where they play a position kind of like football. So that's how he kind of like develop like through that. So it's very hard to kind of like play against like team who, yeah, that England kind of like system, you know? And what do you call it? And any guy, what do you call it? Sancho has been one of the guys that, according to the style I've heard, that he's played more balls into the penalty box than any other kind of like, kind of like team. I would like to, I feel like at some point today, he's going to get some kind of like made because if England, like next game, if something is going tight and it's like nail nail or something like that, and you need someone to come and unlock the defense, I would see guys like uh, Sancho and then uh, Greenish coming in to kind of like change the game. I feel like Greenish, no matter what he do today, he's still going to end up finding himself on the bench come the quarterfinal games. I don't know. There's something about what they call it. Uh, Southgate, you just remind me of early, early man. They don't like, you remind me a lot of like typical England, English manager. They don't like plays with technique. They always like the your your, your players that can be tracking back. They're the McTominay kind of like players, track back, track back, defensive kind of like man. And they just tell you all you need to see about the way England is and the way the, way the whole coaching is. Mm, I, I feel like he's similar in a way where he goes with his tried and trust, trusted guys. And he doesn't want to deviate. He doesn't want to really want to take the risk. Obviously, we're seeing guys like, you know, Graylish now and stuff like that because, and Saka, because he's been forced, to, his, his hand's been forced because of that. Right. But I don't think he would have been saying that throughout the tournament. And it's a shame because we've got a lot of attacking attacking talent and it shouldn't be by default that guys like Graylish and guys like Saka and, and Sancho or anyone like this gets on a, you know, is able to get on the pitch. I think it should be down to pure merit what they've been doing. Yes, Sancho hasn't got Premier League experience, but what San like you know, a lot of it. But what he has been doing is performing at a very high stage in the Champions League, yeah. back to back to back. These guys like Calvin, Declan, you know, Saka, they haven't smelt that. Do you know what I mean? In their careers, they haven't they haven't smelt. They haven't come nowhere near it. And for me, performing in the Champions League does say something. You know what I mean? He's getting to you know, he's not getting knocked out in the knockout stages every single year. You know, he's doing all quite all right and he's performing well. So, yeah. And I just, you know, he needs to come to the Premier League and I, I do feel like he'll adapt. And 
in the Premier League. I think like one of the big issues, you know, about settling down in the UK, the weather and all of that stuff, Sancho's going to be used to that. He's always coming to Manchester, I hear it, or UK. But like, yeah, he's going to be used to that. And as I say, you know what, the lineup. He's got yeah. friends. I think he'll settle yeah. down pretty quick. The lineup, the first lineup, for example, I had nothing against it because I always knew like, you cannot bench someone like Raheem Sterling who, who just played the Champions League final. You yeah, can't yeah, bench someone like Ford who yeah. just played the Champions League final. And you can't bench someone like Mount who just played the Champions League final over Jack Grealish who didn't even have no kind of like Champions League experience. So I did agree with that. But after the, the way they play so poor against like Scotland, especially even Raheem Sterling, for example, he plays so poor against kind of like Scotland, I would have thought he would have lost his place. And even Rashford should have even started today. Because you have to give those kind of like players a bit of confidence, you know. Because if you want, and this is when the knockout stages come. When your knockout stages come and you need players to step in to perform, they play today, they get a bit of confidence. And then when you need them, they come. And you know, it's the same problem you go at Man United. We want a bigger squad, but you don't utilize your rotation. Rashford should have started today just to get his confidence back. Because don't bring him on the next game when you are down and out and you need someone to come in. Because he don't have the confidence to come in and make an impasse. Rashford should have started today as a kind of a like confidence boost, to be honest with you. Like, you know, and even Kane for that, so Kane should have been benched and bring uh, Calvin Levy on too. Italy, ahead, they have used almost 23 players in this tournament, Italy. 23 players. And you know what? When you get to knockout stage, any of them guys can step inside and do a job because they are ready. So they just said about England, well, man. You said it, you said it right there. Look. 20 something subs I was about to touch on that you know we have we could make what five subs a game um and all uh Southgate is not making he's not make he's not nearly utilizing that especially when we're trying to win a game do you know what I mean when we're trying to like you've got uh, your uh, attacking threat your attacking sort of threat is your biggest asset you know what you've got what? sitting on your bench is your biggest asset if you can't tap into that when you're drawing a game when you're trying to win a game it for me is worrying. For me, it doesn't make sense. And you've got guys like Sancho, you've got guys like Graylish, you've got guys like Saka, you've got guys like you know, all of this Rashford all on your bench, and you don't want to utilize these, you know, combined. Oh, it's just uh, like the attacking that England took. Everybody was talking about England attacking players, you know, how this thing, but so far, England has got only one goal in the whole tournament, one goal for the so called best attacking team. In a tournament, score one goal. Italy, yeah. you might really go to see how scored. Yeah. They've been bugging free every game. Look, it just shows you the man, bench. Africa. All I'm saying is the bench, the combined sort of just between Rashford and Sancho alone, the combined goals and assists is probably clocking 30 plus each each way, you know, give or take. Man, I'm just saying, Southgate, Southgate needs to be stuck up to this tournament because the World Cup is what? The World Cup is next year, and you can be taking him to the World Cup because look I don't see England game past the the last uh, what do you call it 16 because today if they win against the Republic they got France German or Portugal one of them man's waiting for them I don't see them beating them I really don't like so I don't know it would just be interesting to see we are I mean, as a my United fan and supporting England it's just the worst <laughs> worst summer it can't be by hey no, sir. We just here. We, we used to not see subs anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> tell me about it. It's like watching us all over again, Manchester United. Right. Look, let's quickly move on. I'm gonna wrap this up quick. Scene. So, Paul Pogba. I'm hearing that you know on the BBC they're reporting that Paul Bog Paul Pogba is now in negotiations, or we, the board, are in negotiations with Paul Pogba for a new contract. Now, Paul Pogba has previously come out and said, you know, Manchester United hasn't offered him anything. There's not been any engagement. Now, it seems officially that those discussions has started to happen. Now, the number being tooted around, you know, is within the 400, is it 500 million euros or something like that, or 400 million pounds or something along that region. Um, and it's dividing the fans' opinion. Because you've got one hand, you've got people saying, you know, it's too much money. You know, he's holding us for ransom. It's going to break the wage structure and cause, you know, disharmony in the squad for future players and contract negotiations, etc. On the other hand, you've got people saying, you know what, throw that money at him. He's a quality signing. You can't replace this guy, um, Paul Pogba. You ain't going to be able to find nothing else out there. Either way, 
Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is in a tough position because he's got to make a difficult call. You know, do you give Pogba the money that he wants? Whatever it is, it's definitely going to be in that around that 400 region or even, you know, slightly more. I don't know. With Riola, anything's possible. Or do you say, you know what, walk? Now, another thing, let me put a spin to that because there's been also been discussions about a pot- potential swap with Pogba and Varane or someone other like that. But it does seem for some reason that nobody, the market is not really ready for swap deals. It never has been ready for swap deals. Yeah, they happen every once in a while, rarely. But the market just isn't ready for that. The market only wants cash. You can, you know, you can stagger that cash payment over X number of years like Arsenal's done with Pepe, but they want money. They want money to buy the players they want. So one, what do you do when it comes to Pogba and this contract situation, do you let him go or do you give him the contract? Or two, do you can you see a swap deal happening with Pogba? And if it if you if and if it was up to you, who would you want to swap him with? Well, a swap deal with Varane is just out of the question because Real Madrid, they don't they don't want no money for this. And I feel like they want the cash because their main goal is to go get a, a Mbappe. That's their main goal. That's where they're trying to get money from everywhere to either get a deal for Mbappe or Haaland. So that's their main goal. They, their main goal is not about what they call it, uh, Pogba at all. And yeah. I really feel like United, I feel like we play our hands a little bit too early. You know, a little bit too kind of like early. I just wanted us to kind of like wait a little bit until probably in the end of the season before we offer that. Because I, t- I told you, it's kind of like playing a kind of like a, a poker where everybody kind of like showed their hand. Pogba did not have as I told you he didn't have a lot of like suitors if you want to go to PSG I feel like PSG is the only person that will kind of like pay the money the kind of like money that we want to pay him you know and if you go to PSG what he's losing is he's losing that kind of like superstar commercial value that comes with it you know which is what players like in, uh, in Mbappe are staring so high because they know that when they play in the French League they don't get that kind of like publicity that they need you know that marketing value that they need that's why they're trying to go to these big leagues like the Spanish or the Premiership to just do that. And I feel like Pogba needs to do that because he's one of the most marketing players like around right now. The guy was marketing for Champions League when we were in Europa League. <laughs> that, that should tell you everything you need to know. So I feel like United should have just waited a bit, do our transfer deals and just say, hey, you know what? Our team is getting to places and I promise you in the next like two years or so, our team with the talent that we got and the kind of like transfer that we got. I mean, you sign Sancho, Varane and everything like that. Like, anybody would just see that this team is ready to win something, not even next year, maybe the year after that. You get rid of the manager, bring in another manager, bro, we're ready to win stuff. Easily, we're ready to win stuff, you know? Would you offer him the so contract? Like we, yeah, we should have just would waited and just offered him... Huh? Would you offer him 400k plus? I wouldn't. I would have probably offered him maybe the same which is that the, the gear is on, you know? The same which is that the gear is on, because we're making the same mistake. We will offer Pogba that kind of like wages and he will not be our best. You don't offer a player who's not your best player, the highest paid, uh, to become the highest paid player, not even just in the team, but in the premiership. But is it Pogba's, is it Pogba's fault that he's not our best player? Or is it the fact that no manager is able to utilize, not build the squad around him? Because he clearly looks like a, a guy. No, you you can do it. I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel it, it, it's both. You know, I feel it's Bob. And you know what? If you're going to offer him this kind of like wages, then give him the tools to be the best player there. If you're going to offer Pogba that kind of like money, you cannot offer him that and then play him as a, D- a DM when you know that that's not his strongest kind of like position. You've offered him that position, play that kind of like system that get the best out of him, which is like the three in the midfield, you know? But then again, too, and then I blame him too because look, Bruno, for example, he played there. He played kind of like super, but I'll tell you what, you play Bruno anywhere in that kind of like midfield, you will see still that kind of like leadership skills, skills, and you're not gonna see him making that kind of like bad publicity that comes with the club, you know. He hasn't you're been getting that much, that. he hasn't been getting that much good criticism over this Euros tournament, though. Bruno, Bruno's hey, no, been, man. he's Bruno's not doing it for my United, and he you will never hear him talk about, oh yeah, I want to leave my United, or his brother is not coming there to just do that. So even when he's getting that kind of like wages, look. If Bruno get 400,000 a week and he play the same position that he's playing, his worst season, he's going to score 10 goals because my United are going to get 10 penalties <laughs> and he's going to back 10 penalties. <laughs> Papa can't even bury penalties, bro. He can't even score penalties, bro. He was missing penalties beginning of, I uh, think, not last season or so. Remember against Wolves, when Rashford scored one, he took it and missed it, bro. 
Bruno, 400,000, he scored 10 penalties. Pogba, 400,000, he ain't scoring 10 penalties. He ain't. You're not serious. Look, so for me, <laughs> yeah, like, my verdict on Pogba is this. Like you said, similar to what you said, I feel like with Pogba, he's gone through a number of managers, Moyes, whatever, whatever. But for me, I feel like we still haven't built a system around him that supports him. You see him in, you know, for Juve, you've seen him for the French squad. He's around solid DMs. Manchester United has not had a solid DM to partner Pogba even playing that three that can benefit Pogba. We're not doing that. We're playing him as, you know, in a two-man midfield, which doesn't get the best out of him. And, or we're playing him further up advanced on the wing, again, which is not probably best suited for him. So for me, I would say, do you know what? I would rather us get a solid DM, give him that money, knowing that we're going to get a solid DM that can support him like Wilfred and Didi or whatever. And... But if we're not going to do that, then I won't want him to have that contract. Do you know what I mean? And I don't know yeah. what Man United's plans are in terms of buying a defensive midfielder and who that's going to be. If it's someone like Declan Rice, I don't want us to do that because I just don't right. feel like he's going to be able to manage the middle by himself and leave Pogba to do what he's going to do. Um, so it's it's very dependent. But under Oli, overall, I'd probably say you should let him go. Not because Pogba's not great and, or quality, it's just because he just imbalances our squad under Oli because he's not getting the right tools to support him. You're imbalancing the squad and I feel like Man United will be doing a lot more better if we had a balanced team. We won't be drawing as many games. I feel like we'll be, yeah, Pogba has moments of brilliance, but I just feel like, yeah, it's just not balanced. Yeah. And like you know, I'm struggling with Oli too because when Oli first took over as Ketika manager, Pogba was scoring so much goals and at the time, he pushed him a bit higher up the Bruno, pitch. Bruno's you position, know? it was Bruno's position it was in. Exactly. Bruno's but position. what happened was that when we went to the following season, he should have kept about there because that time Bruno wasn't even there. But what he does was that because he has so many crap players, he ended up making a uh, Pereira play there instead of Pogba. And then he thought that he could, he could. Pogba always kind of like, as, I said, as he said in his interview, and my United, he played a place where he can do a job for the team, not necessarily a place where they can get the best out of him. Because right that time, I remember that preseason, only first like full season, he should have played Pogba at the number 10. But if he played Pogba at the number 10, Pereira couldn't play like in the middle. So what he did was that he sacrificed Pogba to play D because he felt like Pogba could be getting the ball and be kind of like detecting the ball and stuff like that. But what he realized after that time was that one, Pogba was bad defensively. And then two, and then two, what do you call it? Two, uh, two, uh, what do you call it? Two, Pogba couldn't defend. Yeah. So that was that was uh, that was it, and then he get injury prone too. But if he is gonna offer him that kind of like money, then surely, surely there's a system in place that is gonna put him there. Because I know Papa is gonna talk about that. Papa is gonna talk about look, I got ambition to be like a, one of the best midfield that day, and I can't play that playing this position. So where are you gonna play me? Are you gonna play me three in the midfield or on the left hand side or what? Because that DM position, I do not want to play, and I feel like that's gonna be part of the contract negotiation too but I don't know I feel like this saga is far from over and they may be 450,000 is what's gonna do the deal boy yeah man maybe 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 we'll see hopefully those the discussions turn out well they can come to some sort of conclusion because for me I feel like we have to get Pogba to sign because if it doesn't get agreed it does seem like he's gonna leave on a free because nobody wants to do an exchange thing and for me I know I heard that Pogba as well. I read somewhere that Pogba would still like to go to a Real Madrid, even though Zidane's not there. Um, just because, you know, I don't know what it is, I his, his love is for them, but I feel I heard he still would even consider going there. Um, but for me, I feel like, yeah, if we, if we can't get him to sign, he's probably going to walk and we don't want that and we can't do an yeah, exchange. If he, if he walk, if he walk with the kind of wages that United are going to give him, He's only gonna get out PSG. He's only gonna get. He's only gonna get. He's only and gonna I feel get. like if he does that, he's only gonna do that because his agent for the signing on fee. But even if he signs this new contract, he can still leave in like a year or two time. He can still leave. leave. He can still leave. He Obviously, still leave. It'll be and tough then United get the transfer money for him, and then he get his money. I feel like he's gonna sign. It. He's gonna sign a new contract, and then try to leave in the next like a year or two. 
if we kind of like do but I, I really i really think so i think he's gonna sign definitely gonna sign it, it makes sense for him to sign and then force them to move a year or two after that he's still gonna get his transfer he's not gonna retire united he's still definitely yeah. gonna get his transfer for me we paid he's our highest he's our record signing him leaving on the free is not gonna look good for us not gonna look good for the club you're basically losing out on 80 plus million or whatever it is. I don't know, you know, the deflationary rate because of how long he is, he's been at United and the age or whatever, but you're losing out on a significant amount of millions for nothing. So I would pro- probably prefer giving him that 400 or whatever it is he asks. Yeah. And like you said, maybe trying to move him on if, you know, his heart still desires it and he wants to move on. I mean, if he wants to stay, then obviously we'll, we'll try and work with that. But um, just to fin- finalise it, um, Manchester United's um, fixtures, f- pre-season fixtures came out today. So it's four games. Uh, Manchester United, uh, in no order, but I think I read, you know, we're going to be ha- playing against QPR. We're going to be playing against, uh, who is Derby. it? Everton. Everton, Derby is also one of them. And there was one more, just checking it now. Brentford. 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 Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so it's Derby County on the 18th of July. Um, we've got QPR on the 24th of July, it's a week later. Then four days later, we've got Brentford on the 28th of July. Then we've got Everton on the 7th of August. Everton's obviously going to be the one for us that is going to be more exciting. And Brentford can play ball too, to be fair. Um, so that'll be interesting. Um, but... That preseason for me is very important because we didn't have one last season, and we saw the impact it had on our start in the beginning of the season where we got thrashed against Tottenham, etc. I think Aston Villa as well. We dropped points and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, I feel like even if it is four games, that'll be what we need to get everyone, you know, up and running, working together again, understanding each other. Especially if we bring in new players. I know that they've got the Euros as well, but you know, there's certain players just not getting game time as we already discussed. But for me. In that preseason, I would like to see. You know, there's been talks about formation changing and all of this stuff, and I would like to see whatever Oli's thinking about. You know, his approach of going into the new season. Let's see how that works out in the preseason. Let's see you stick right. to it. Let's see you get the best out of it. I mean, for me, I can't really see any other formation that you get the best out of it, these players other than a four-three-three, um, like the France um, formation that they played with. Uh, Griezmann as the number 10 and then they had two strikers and then three in the middle that way you'll be able to you know there'll be more chance of people like Donny playing more chance of the people like Pogba playing in a position that suits him and then you could potentially or you could have your two dear, your two box to box or whatever you want to call them Scott McTominay and Fred I feel like that's probably one of the best formations that can suit the players but Manchester United didn't seem to adjust to that type of style consistently we had good performances when we had the diamond as well but it was wasn't consistent i feel like when we reverted back to the 4 3 3 one that was more natural we were used to it now what i would like to see is ollie and the coach and staff properly try to get the best out of the players in that formation and i hope to see in those four games something a bit different man something a bit different what's your yeah. views on it i mean my view is that i'm, I'm more looking forward to the uh... The first two games because I think it's against a uh, derby and then QPR because we're not gonna have a lot of like the senior players there because they're gonna be like on holiday because their year is gonna finish. So I'm more interested to see players like Ahmed because uh, he probably is gonna start uh, that game and maybe maybe one. I don't even matter. think I don't even think any of the fir- the Euro guys are gonna play to be honest. Nah, they, they're not gonna be ready for that kind of thing. So you know what? It'll be interesting to see what kind of formation that he's gonna kind of like play because. He played that kind of a system for Freddie McTominay. Obviously, Matic is going to probably play if he's still there and he hasn't forced a move yet. I expect him to come back to preseason. Maybe Mata if we don't give him a contract too. So I expect the front lineup to be uh, Greenwood, Greenwood on top, uh, Dillo on the what do you call it? Uh, Dillo on the right, Martial on the left, and then maybe Lindegaard too in the middle. That's what I expect it to kind of like start off with. And the middle to, though. Huh? No one Bissaka. No, I'm talking about at the top. Oh. At the top. Oh, Greenwood I'm at the yellow. Oh, I'm at the yellow. Uh... I'm at the yellow, yeah. I'm at the yellow on the right. Greenwood uh, on top. Lindegaard in the middle. And then on the left-hand side, Martial will probably start on the left-hand side, you know. You think Lind- Lingard's coming back? You think he's coming back, Lingard? 
Well, whether he come back or not, he's going to be there for preseason. I feel like the Lind- Lindegaard is not going to be sold until probably around end of July, August. You know how United do their deal. They're not going to sell Lindegaard early. They're going to keep him there to make West Ham feel like, oh, they got plans for him today. And you know what? I will not be surprised if he get a new deal too. I won't be surprised if he get a new deal too, you know? So, You're watch that space. But he is going to be there. All the United players there, the ones that we're going to get sold, are all going to be there for preseason two. We're going to see Gardner too play in preseason two. So, maybe he might play in that deep role. So, we might be able to see what that, whatever he can do. But in any game, we're playing against a championship position too. So, I expect him to have a very good game, you know? I expect people like Ahmed to have like a fantastic game to just say, hey, you know what? If I can do that, just that. And then obviously, maybe against Brentford or Everton, it's going to be uh, your guy, Sancho, debut too. So that's going to be something to look forward to too. So, I, wouldn't even, yeah. I, I wouldn't even be surprised if Sancho didn't play even the preseason. I feel like... Oh, he's he going to play preseason. He's going to play one game at least. I would even be surprised if he played the first few, if he missed the first few games. I wouldn't be surprised if he missed the first few games. Unless we can get the deal over practically like now. I just could see, like if it did drag out, I can see it just not happening. Personally, oh, no. I feel like he hasn't played football in quite some time. He would have missed. Uh, then it would, yeah, it's a mess. I told you that, that day is going to be done in July. Look, England are coming home on Monday. England are going to get knocked out <laughs> on Monday. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, trust me. England are going to get knocked out. But look, today is what? Today is Tuesday. A week, a week, a, a week today, you should be hearing more about. <laughs> Sancho deal almost yep. getting agreed. Oh, mess. And then by the weekend after that, on the 29th or so, yeah. actually, no, no, yeah, on the 29th or so, they're going to be announcing because England will be out of the tournament and he can come and do his video shoot, music video shoot for My United. And then he can go to preseason, come late, and then play their last two premiership uh, preseason games. That is going to be get done before July. They're just waiting for Sancho to get knocked out and, and they're going <laughs> to speed it up. There's Trust rumors that, that they're lining it with our new kit launch as well. So we'll sit, we have to wait and see. But well, well, there's a reason why they haven't announced Oligan Associate new contract and uh, Tom Heating. They're just waiting to announce Sancho before they announce that. You're gonna, you telling me you're going to announce associate contract before these people? <laughs> Man, we will kill we'll destroy the whole studio. <laughs> hey, look, I'm done. Look, look, it's about five minutes to eight. And I want to catch this England game. Get me and then see how it turns out. See if our boy actually gets on the pitch. And then Rashford. You're going to pitch. You can go on the pitch. And then uh, uh, they're going to gas about uh, Greenish becoming a 100 million player. Ooh, that, that, that guy don't deserve that. But he's England. It's going to be boring. It's going to be 1 0 or so. Hey, I mean, my United, my United 2.0. He can be his 100 million player at Villa because no one's going to sign him. We saw. Uh, City offer 100 million for Kane. Do you think they're going to still offer that type of money for Grealish? Oh, they no, he's stuck. Greenish is he's stuck. He's nah, stuck so. there, bro. He's stuck there. You know what? All those guys, they deserve to be stuck there. Getting new contract there with this kind of a team. They deserve to be stuck there, man. Nah, I mean, they should just give us, they should just give Greenish to us on loan, but I'll take him on loan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, I'm off. I'm off. I'm off. Look, this is the OT99 Band Room where opinions are shared and smoke gets served. Remember to like comment and subscribe and support the thing you can catch me on twitter at 99 banter instagram at ot99 underscore banter room look tiktok at ot99 banter room all one word look follow me there support the thing stay tuned follow us with the latest manchester united news transfer news gossip rumors and all that jazz look nk do you want to shout out your show source oh it just say uh, what do you call it i say nk what you call it what you call it garage garage i what do you call it i what do you call it that's twitter instagram and stuff like that man <laughs> do football then <laughs> well you heard it in it what you call it what you call it at nk in it but look yeah Thanks for tuning in, man. We'll catch you in the next episode. Peace.